he's the guy that we'll be interviewing. Okay. Hi, Naresh. How are you? Hi. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes, we are, we are already here. Okay. Yes, we are, and, and, and Henry is also here already. Okay, see you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. Can I get a water somewhere? Uh, yes, uh, I guess so. Uh, if, you, if you want a beer instead? No. <laughs> oh, Francis student, yes, yes. You can sure. see that uh, he, he's a, one sure. of those uh, students oh. that are always in the biggest. <laughs> Come a little for so. this way. We want to. to, to yeah. If, if we have the video for something, it's. <laughs> so, yeah, See, free that's free that's free the three of us. Keep in touch. So. Oh, yeah. oh, that's that's true. I have that. the two. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So he did the most. He just wanted to do things. <laughs> yes, he had the most amazing uh, success. Yes, yes. Uh, he's shaped that university and he's getting yes. old and wondering what is his plans for replacing him. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so from UMBC, you come back to work. And you know what? I'll bring that sheet because it will probably help. Sure. Us. And uh, why Berkeley? Uh, you know, fate, I guess. <laughs> if you want to be philosophical, it's a it's a great school. Like, uh, yeah, some professor recommended me here. Uh, I wanted to do interdisciplinary thing. I was purely doing organic chemistry. Yeah. And mm -hmm. here I came to a virus lab, and you know, I didn't have much background in that. I think that was microbiology mm -hmm. other than that, uh, but the professor was welcoming me. So he wanted to uh, me to design some drug delivery agents mm -hmm. for things like CRISPR. Yes. So, you know, they were using viruses to deliver those. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, I can make safer, easier ones with chemical monkeys. Uh -huh. So... That looks... Ah. So, so, so <laughs> we're all there. <laughs> yeah. So, and then... Uh, he actually spent like quite a lot of money setting up an organic chemistry lab for me. He almost like oh. quarter million dollars to set up a lab. And this when your PhD student? I was a postdoc when I moved post here. After oh. I moved here, I, I did not have, have any chemistry thing. Right. So he gave me a whole lab and I could set up. And uh, it, was, it was a good ride. Like design some molecules, chemical molecules, tissue culture studies, mm -hmm. animal studies. We came up with some molecules, yeah. file patterns through UC yeah. Berkeley. So, and then I decided to launch my company afterwards. Okay. Did anything happen with the patents? Uh, it's it's going through. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So the only school, the other other school that has is Howard, uh, has some mm -hmm. grants. So yes. So we're hoping somebody would like to say that's right. right. The jump right. on it. Are you going to also bundle your patents with their patents and and try to? At some point, some company yeah. might license those. I think. You know, you know, I didn't have that bandwidth at that point. You know. Uh, because it takes a long time to bring something to market, yes. especially in aspects yeah. therapeutics. So how did you get into the uh, company idea? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I caught the entrepreneurship bug after I came here uh -huh. to Berkeley. You see, everything is started up in the yeah, that, that, That's where you should start telling us uh, your story. Because I was telling him that, you know, if anyone could help us understand this thing, uh, besides the guys at Iperon, yeah. <laughs> uh, it would be you from the perspective of someone who, who was affected by all these things uh, right. in some way, right? Uh, yeah. As maybe as an entrepreneur, yeah. right? And, and, and then uh, later, all, or, or not later, probably at the same time, as uh, someone who was trying to make this also feasible and possible to other right. entrepreneurs or yeah, other postdoc entrepreneurs. Yeah. So basically, I did not have anything to do with startups. They don't yeah. teach you anything in grad school or postdoc. Mm -hmm. and, but then like, as a came closer to designing my molecules, I started seeing results. I thought I should start a company based on that. Mm -hmm. And then started looking around resources and like surprisingly I couldn't find any. Mm. I they sent me to the business school. Yes. They speak a different language. You know, they mm -hmm. offer advanced management students. Like I wouldn't understand what a CAC is, mm -hmm. cost cost of customer acquisition. Like I didn't know what that is. You know, yeah. Don't worry. Remember the other day I was asking the same thing. I mean, people start using acronyms. Yeah. And, uh, they use if you're it, not used yeah. to that acronym. And I, I needed more fundamental education of like you know what should you actually do if you have an idea, if you have a lab research that you want to start a company. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Berkeley is Berkeley, as in like ish, money was sent. You yes. should not be commercializing. A lot mm -hmm. of academia is that way, but yes. then a lot of our, them are entrepreneurial. So you had to tread very carefully what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, after looking for resources, QB3 was one group that was doing some work here on campus. How did you find them? Uh, they used to run some workshops on campus. Uh, I just happened to run in the, into them. Mm -hmm. uh, for That was more scientific. 
Yes. But then they talked about how they have the startup thing going on at UCSF. Yes. So I used to go there in the middle of the day, <laughs> once a week, because they had the talks there during the lunchtime. Right. Uh, over yeah, what, what were those, what were those talks like? All they were like basics, like you know, people who have started companies, the IP, like you know, how do you put and form well, companies. Basically, their experience. Experience yeah. and raising money. How do you raise money? Who do you go to raise money? Mm-hmm. And those grant structures. So yeah. those are the kinds of things they were teaching. And like my boss was like. Where the hell are you going in the middle of the day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's a once a week. He was really research. So that was back in yeah. what? Uh, this 2009, the 2010. Yes. 2009 is when I moved here. 2010 is right. when I started right. this, and then yeah. and I'm like, why am I going to UCSF? If you also just, started uh, uh, BPAP in 2010. 2010 wow. towards 2000, end of 2010 was when I asked like, you know, why don't we have anything like this? We have 3,000 postdocs on campus. Mm-hmm. That's a huge population not to be addressing. 3,000. 3,000 postdocs. Yeah. yeah. And across every discipline? Across or? every discipline. Yes. About 60 to 70 percent are life sciences and physical sciences. Mm-hmm. About yes. 10 percent are engineering and the rest of them are mm-hmm. And I went, ended up with the vice, uh, the VSPA, the Visiting Scholar Postdoc Affairs Office. I told them, because they, they had a Berkeley Postdoc Association, they were just doing social things. Yeah. And you know, I said I would start something on entrepreneurship. Uh, they said no. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they give a reason. Uh, reason they, they they started another group called the Postdoc Industry Exploration Program, where they were basically That's a, yeah. pipe. The pipe. Yeah, pipe. They were basically putting a bunch of postdocs on a bus and taking them to different companies once a month. Mm-hmm. So they started that program, and they're like, you know, we don't know how things are going. That was the beginning of this, you know, these groups. Yes. And they made me wait for a year. But then in the meanwhile, I was going around different departments as a lot of people said they could help. They all sat on the advisory board. Who, who said they could help? Like like deans of engineering school and business school. Mm-hmm. They said they will be happy to engage you guys. And so in 2011, finally, the vice chancellor's office, you know, I ended up there through some meetings and they said like, okay, we'll fund. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and start. Most of them said, don't do it. QB3 said, don't do it. Because they, they tried doing it here. Tried doing what? Uh, similar entrepreneurship workshops, it seems, yeah. back in the day. And you must know Doug Crawford. Mm-hmm. Doug Crawford from UCSF. Mm-hmm. Not sure. I met some of the people. Like, okay. Between. Yeah, Doug Crawford. He he is the one. He was the one running those workshops at that point. He was okay. very very active. Yes. Yes. Uh, and he said like they tried here, they didn't work. But then he said like if you want to give a shot, was was it because of the mindset of the university that at that stage was? Still it was not a combination of things. They were doing the workshops in the middle of the day, twelve to one. And mm-hmm. most post PIs won't let the postdocs go out and do things. That was mm-hmm. one reason that they found. During my research, I, I decided that I'm not going to do it in the middle of the day. So we decided to do it in the end of the day at 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Once the PIs leave, yes, uh, they can. this is our time. <laughs> sure. When, when the cats go, and the cat, go yeah. home, the rats can Yeah, and, and Doug said, okay, go ahead and try it out. And <clears throat> he said, like, well, with postdocs, they don't talk much, so I'll throw some beer and pizza in. Uh, and VSP, I said they can sponsor pizza, but then for the first few workshops, QB3 sponsored them, yeah. everything. That was great because, you know, they come in, we feed them some pizza, they're hungry, and then take them into the workshop yeah. where they we just talk about some basic things, you know, some success stories, a lot of failure stories because we want to show them both sure. sides. Sure. And then afterwards is when we open up the beer. Mm-hmm. So people were leaving without the network event. So Doug said, throw in some beer, they'll stay. <laughs> it worked. It, it, it has been working since then. Okay, and what came out of the networking? Startups came out of networking. Mm-hmm. We at least have 30 startup companies that came out since 2012. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there were like some national in- interactions between MBA students we used to come uh, and they used to. Yeah, they still do, right? We still have a we, lot we of MBA so, students that come. And, yeah, mm-hmm. we just not we don't invite the scientists and engineers. We just invite the law students and the uh, MBAs and so on. Okay, and so they met. They mean, met. Yeah, some people met there. Some ideas came out of it. Some startups came out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what happened to the startups that came out of there? These twenty startups I'm talking about are, are surviving. Some failed. Yeah. Uh, but these are the ones that got funded and that are still running. Right. right. And most of them are founders are postdocs and and grad students. Coming out of their research or other mostly ones? research. Most of mostly research. Yeah. I, I would say about ninety percent are research based. Mm-hmm. And is this a research that's uh, close to a product or far away? Uh, some are. Some, you know, mm-hmm. 
it takes a long time, as you know. Yeah. These are like biology, engineering, energy-based yeah. battery startups and stuff. So, uh, you know, I think if they are like more like software-based, they would go into the market much faster. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, they're still like coming close to the market acceptance rate. And stuff. Mm-hmm. It's so, really interesting because one of the, the series of uh, talks that we have now, uh, it's really focused on on this kind of companies that take longer to right, to, to yeah. reach the market. Yeah, so is there enough of a support structure for them now or is that still a gap? Oh, there's still a gap. Yeah, there's still a gap. Yeah. A part of that system, you know, one of the reasons I could not navigate the system because it's a big university and I don't think there is a single body that can serve the whole university. Mm-hmm. So that's why university said, okay, if departments want to do something on their own, so they you can go ahead and do that. So that's why you have so many groups and structures like department level professors are running some programs, groups like Skytech are running programs. They all like came up like crazy, and mm-hmm. around 2013 uh, is when they started like okay, this is getting crazy because if somebody wants to start a company, where do they go? Where do they start? Mm-hmm. Do they go to the student groups or, or the incubators or the professors? Like uh, so, they wanted to build a structure, and then Mike Cohen from uh, IPRO office uh, he was brought in and he created some structure. Uh, I would okay. say, what's, what's the structure? It's like, they created a web page called, uh, what's that, Gateway? Uh, it's here, it's more, it's, uh, it, will, it will come to me, I, I, I'll, yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically, you know, they said like, if somebody can come here, you know, they have a uh, concierge service, if they have questions, there's somebody to answer those questions, mm-hmm. and they would point them, okay, you should go to the house global business for this. Right. You know, there's a clean tech to market program if you want to do some research. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to Skydeck for accelerators. Mm-hmm. So those are the kinds of structures they created, uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, that that was mostly his work. And but at what point did all of these things sprout? They were going on for a long time. We didn't know where all of this were. Ah. And they so somebody had to like, catalog everything that was going on. I had to divide them into like student groups, yeah. faculty groups, independent departmental groups. Uh, that is how. So who did this? IPR, IP no, office, and was office of the vice chancellor. Right? Okay. Mike Cohen was, yeah, was Michael Cohen, okay. the, the guy that we're, we're trying right. to. Right. Yeah, he's, he's a great so guy. He he's was, done. He was sent out yeah. to find out what was going on. Yeah, and, and the office of the vice chancellor created something called the Innovation Council. Mm-hmm. They started bringing the heads of all these programs into the room in the middle of the day. Mm. So, and they call out the student groups, all the faculty that are more entrepreneurial. And so those uh, meetings have been going on now? For, They've been going on for now, uh, for the past three, four years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of things came out of it. I think they applied for some grant money from the government and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So who runs those meetings? Uh, under the office of the Vice Chancellor for Research. The Vice Chancellor sits on the meetings. He chairs them? He chairs them. Mm-hmm. Is he really enthusiastic about this? Uh, uh, we, we, yeah, so uh, grand- What is your impression? No, yeah, they, they it's, are. it's changed, uh, right, it's, it's changed with this friendly- I would uh, say it's going on the right direction, I think. Uh, uh, Graham Fleming was the first one who started those things and then he, and then came subsequent people. Everybody was supportive. They knew that other universities are benefiting, especially Stanford and UCSF, because if you're trying to build startup companies, uh, even though I think UC Berkeley was producing startups, nobody had a record of what was happening, and mm-hmm. then start they start cataloging now. Not they know that Stanford mm-hmm. is number one, UC Berkeley is number two. So who do they look to as the model? Uh, as a model, uh, I think they looked all over the country. So yeah, IP office very closely involved. They looked at big tier universities, small tier universities, mid range universities. Uh, so they had yeah, some guidance from others. So do they uh, write up a report? Or? There's a report that came. There is. We can get all the. Uh, I don't know. It should be. It should be public. It's a public yeah. university. Yeah. Um, uh, let me dig through that. Uh, I might have a report at some point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was a part of those innovation council meetings. Right. So, you're still part of that, right? Or yes. Still, uh, are, are they? Uh, yeah, they're going on. So it changed over a period of time. Now they're bringing more like city of Berkeley comes in and like pitches what they're trying to do, and mm-hmm. so it became a little bit less relevant for us at some point. Okay. So well, when and why did the city come in? Oh, because they saw all the startup activity in, in the area. There's Skydeck, there's all these people. So they want real estate for these offices and lab spaces and so on. So, and then real estate agents were like really active in that space for a long time mm-hmm. because they had like labs in Emeryville and Berkeley. Mm-hmm. So they were more active. So they came together with the city and they started doing things. There's a Berkeley. I see. So, so now the, the meetings tend to be more like uh, 
you know. Yeah, yeah. Pitch, what can also, we do? Also, meetings. <laughs> yeah. What do you want? What can we yeah. do? Yeah. 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 What did the uh, real estate people start doing with the government? They trying to change the policies to encourage setup of startup companies. Okay. Yeah. I think that is what that has definitely changed. Uh, bond bill labs came down. For what policies need to be changed? I I don't as in like they, even if there were policies, they were not visible. Yeah. To encourage startup companies, so now they're like more vocal about those things. But hey, they come to Skydeck, they come to Citrus Foundry, and they come to the Innovation Council and say, hey, you know, we have space, and what else can we change? And who says thing. we have space? The city. The city. Oh, the city. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Berkeley, what can we build? Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Berkeley stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, so, it's, not, it's not very easy even to live here. Yeah. And they're like people complain that it's hard to commute. So you know they've made some modifications to the bar station, and then they're like now boats coming into Berkeley Marina. <laughs> so they set up like line bikes, bike stands, and so <laughs> they're looking outwards to see how to make this commute easy. And, yeah. And lab spaces was a big thing. So they came into these council meetings in the university. Or yeah. The university? Yeah. Yeah. When did that start to take place? Uh, that was like, I would say, beginning of this year, end right. of last year. This is when it became less interesting for you to to, to be there. Uh, sure, and yeah. yes, uh, yes. Yeah. And the business people are they going to these meetings also? Yes, they're going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's three way now. It's a three way. Yeah, it's 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 much more open. Like it's just not university people. So they identifying people that need to be at the table, and they would invite them, and taking feedback. So, the difference between the discussions in the two eras, what would you say that is? There, there are discussions going on, number one, and that was most, they had to evolve that way. There was more inward looking to see like what we need to do. Yeah. And then the vice chancellor uh, set up a, like two groups, like a faculty entrepreneurship group <laughs> and student entrepreneurship group. They called them the working groups. They want to define a policy of like what, how do we define Berkeley entrepreneurship as? You know, do we want to be Stanford? Do we want to be Harvard? Or do we want to be something else? Mm -hmm. uh, and how do we encourage these activities? Uh, okay. That was Paul Alvisatos. He was at LBNL previously, and he became the vice chancellor for research here. Uh, a lot of those things happened under him. Okay, so and he's someone to talk to. Paul, yeah, Paul is, yeah, he's hard to get. He's he's a provost now. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a provost yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, so he's got super busy, but he 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 started two or three companies himself from mm -hmm. the research in his lab. Phenomenal mm -hmm. guy, you know, uh, chemist. Uh, so he made me the head of that student group. So yes. we brought together a bunch of MBA students, all the student groups and like, uh, they've made a lot more progress on the faculty end because the vice chancellor office was like really involved in that because they knew that they needed support from the faculty to do anything. Yes. Uh, a big thing that came out of that was a biohub that is going to be built. So I think there was that a probably also makes it easier for now for, for students to or, or, or postdocs to live in the middle of the day to do something related to entrepreneurship. Yes, yeah. yes and no. You know, if you look at the population, right? We have about 25, 30,000 undergrad population. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, you know, work goes into helping those undergrads. And then okay. you're talking about a few yeah. thousand postdocs yeah. that might be interested. Sure, 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 sure. And so the emphasis is still not there on, on those part. Uh, so, but then there's a uh, fellowship program that came called Baker Fellows. Hmm. Uh, this is for faculty entrepreneurs. Uh -huh. If they want to start a company, they would give some funding. You know, these are young faculty that are coming out to the university and yeah. and they're giving some money and some training. The way these guys, some, of these, boxes, some of these boxes connect, for example, Baker Fellows. Yeah pays for the pizza in our events, mm -hmm. you know, like they, they know yeah. that this is important for... Because a lot of postdocs are actually, you know, at the end of the day, faculty is not going to leave the job and go start a company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly grad students and postdocs right. that are starting companies. So, you know, we got a bunch of people to go in there mm -hmm. and work with them. So that, is, that was a connection. They see BPEP as like a, a natural partner uh, because they're working in the labs as well. Mm -hmm. So we reached out. So we started working together, you know, you know QB3 here is... Uh, funny, <laughs> they so, they they're, they're more scientific, I would say, than entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. I got into trouble for pointing that at, at one of those innovation council yeah. meetings. Uh, the head of QB3 was livid. <laughs> <laughs> so is it different from QB3 UCSF? So so QB3 is three organizations, right? QB is one is Berkeley, UCSF, Santa Cruz. 
Yes. Now they're adding UC Davis as, as well. They might yeah. call it QB4 yeah. one of these days. But then mm-hmm. what they told me was the group that is doing entrepreneurship is QB3 in OLAP. It's a mm-hmm. separate group. So that's why they got offended when I said like UC Berkeley QB3 is not doing anything. They're mm-hmm. like, we're all the parents of that. You know? mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But what we don't see is activities like mm-hmm. that are going on on UCSF campus. Mm-hmm. So, but then, you know, if we were, so we had to stay under the radar for some time and like, but then we did, we never stopped our organization meetings and, and these workshops. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are these meetings like? Uh, here, the workshops? Yeah. The workshops are like, we're, we are in quite a bunch of topics like IP, uh, fundraising for deep tech and for soft tech, software and, and so basically being in law firms, investors, and founders, a combination of these people. Uh, and you know, they just talk about a topic for some time and they're building their own experiences in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the first half of the workshop. And then we open it up for a panel discussion and, and it's free to interact. Uh, that, that's been a good I have topic. an experience of that today. Because it's, okay. it's, uh, the one similar. that we're having today is, is the last one of oh, the series. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we run about like eight to ten workshops a, a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's uh, what do you see is missing that still has to be done? Maybe from your perspective as a an entrepreneur, you know, that went through the <laughs> Yeah. I think what I've been Because you had to you, you had to you, you sort of helped put this boxes together somehow because yeah. you were the guy that was going from place to place and saying, look, I need help here. And I need right, help. right. So I think what is still lacking is that support for deep technologies. Like mm-hmm. if it's a biotech or an energy tech, yeah. these take a long time. Yeah. When you come to an isolator like Skydeck or some other thing on campus, you're talking about a six month frame period, they yeah. give you a hundred thousand dollars. What I heard was they want a Steph Curry three pointer is not anything else. So anybody who's ready to shoot and they're going to get that money out of it. They're mm-hmm. going to put the money behind them, as opposed to this long-term mm. uh, startup companies. You know, they're not going to. You can't build a therapeutic in a, a six-month period or one no. year. And they're, no. they're talking about five to ten years. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. If you get lucky, mm-hmm. uh, most of them fail. Uh, so that is what a huge missing point because they just put everything in the same bucket. Yeah. If I come and pitch to them, uh, the QB three would be more. QB3 is not doing anything. QB3 runs workshops. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what it but, did was it brought together a bunch of resources, mm-hmm. law firms, investors, and so on. And, you know, they run SBIR workshops. Uh-huh. Uh, but they don't do incubation per se. Oh. They have, they have, yeah, they have some space on campus here where startups go and work. Uh, uh-huh. But that, that too is like one year period, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Six mm-hmm. months to one year. So I don't think it's. Incubator is missing. Uh, yeah, incubators are missing. Okay. And that is what uh, the biohub is going to be coming up for that. That will play that role? That will play that role. For how long a period? I don't know the details yet. I'm, okay. working, with, I'm working with Professor Amy Herr. She is the one uh, who is leading that effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then she actually launched a bunch of companies from our technologies in the lab. So she has that understanding. Okay. That you need more so time. Do we have that name? Amy yeah. Herr? Okay. Yeah, maybe that's uh, someone that we could try and reach yeah, to. Definitely. H E R R. Yeah. I'll make the introduction. Yeah. Great. Yes. Great. 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 Okay, so is it just a matter of uh, money for long term or something else? Money is one thing, and then I would say still, professors, not all of them are going to be conducive to. Uh, helping startups grow or they're mm-hmm. like yeah. they're looked down upon you know, a lot of them are still want oh, I want you to become a faculty as opposed mm-hmm. to not yeah so that culture has to change mm-hmm. uh, I think it will get there uh, it'll take time okay uh, is there any uh, orientation for graduate students about entrepreneurship so or? one of the things that came out of that student group working groups was yeah. that orientation so they're picking one day uh, a year once the semester starts, they're doing something called orientation for entrepreneurship. Hmm. Yeah, so it's a, it's a new edition. Okay. Yeah, they I think they do it on the Cal Day, so you mm-hmm. know everybody is on campus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so something is starting now. Something is starting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's, it's a lot more entrepreneurial as compared to like five, six years ago. There was yeah. a rapid change for sure. Yeah. Everybody is talking about startups more openly. And like, yeah. Okay. So before it wasn't proper to talk about it. No, no. Yeah. 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 It was like hush hush. Mm -hmm. You come to the side like, yeah. oh, should I tell my professor or not? Or should I not? Yeah. <laughs> it's still, it still is the case, with, you know, but then I think it's coming from the vice chancellor's office and now they're actually hiring somebody. It's going on. The hiring process is going on. We'll be in charge of all the entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. that's a new hire that is going to be coming on board. Okay. So from the from the top, from the administration, it's said to be okay. It's not something that came from the faculty pushing that. There was push and pull from both sides. From both sides. A few, a few were for it, a few are not for yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I think the president, Janet Nepal, I don't know, she, she came on board and she became a president. One of the first things she looked at was like, Oh, why are we not commercializing our technologies? Uh -huh. That put a pressure on the IP offices as well. Yes. As like, yeah, they are understaffed. Their job was mostly like, it's a public university, file patterns, try to license any technologies that mm -hmm. they can, or else they sit there. Uh, so suddenly, IP offices got involved with entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. that's where Mike Cohen came into his picture, and now they're very actively involved with all the uh, innovation council meetings and so on. The OTL is. Which one? Yes, the OTL is, yeah. So have they changed over time? They, you know, I think I think they are. They are, yeah. They are much more helpful. I, I, I wouldn't know what to compare it with, but from what you hear from people. Yes. Uh, yeah. So a lot. So I work with the postdoc who's taken a, a letter of agreement from the IP office and for just like five hundred dollars, sign a letter of intent, mm -hmm. and then you can start building a company. And then you know they're they're more supportive. They're taking equities. Mm -hmm. The startups they can't put money in. Yeah. So those were the things that were missing. Uh, they're more active about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Stanford does a much better job of those things. If I if I heard it right, it's okay. not relative. Yeah. Okay. So uh, things are moving here. Things are moving here. Yeah. 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 So what else uh, should we know about what's happening here? What's uh, Cyclotron Road. That yes. is that is an incubator that was funded by the federal government. Uh -huh. They put in. They take them, take, take five to six start startups every year, and they are incubating them for two years. And they're deep tech. They're deep tech. They're energy, mostly yeah. energy. Mm -hmm. They're only energy uh, and manufacturing now, uh, but they're paying eighty thousand dollars for entrepreneurs as salary, mm -hmm. so they don't have to look to the side yeah. for incomes and stuff. Yeah. They just focus, and they're providing them resources. Mm -hmm. I think things like that are going to be. Who's paying for that? Federal government. Department of Energy and so on, uh, and, and, and now, Energy ARPA, DARPA, DARPA, yeah, ARPA. They're all putting yeah. in money. Okay. Yeah. So that came from uh, the Obama administration. In that uh, point time? during that time, yes. Yeah. But it continues on. It continues on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that and they started raising money too from other people. They're not completely depending on government money anymore. anymore. Uh, so they are hiring people to philanthropy. Yeah. 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 So, anything in the rest of the university outside of uh, engineering and the sciences? Do you see anything happening elsewhere? Uh, Haas seem to be doing things in the social space. Mm -hmm. They have this yeah, social entrepreneurship competition yeah, was, yeah. once a year, and I think other countries are actually applying for those things. That's become a big event, actually. Mm -hmm. And what about in the social sciences? I, I, I don't hear much of anything that is coming out there. Yeah. Once in a while somebody will come and complain that there's nothing much going on mm -hmm. to support them. Mm -hmm. We encourage them to come to all of our events. And to sit and come? Yeah. yeah. And what, so, uh, what do they say? What they, uh, no, they, they would come. I, I think the challenges are different. You know, fundraising is harder for them. Yeah. Like I said, like when scientists are not able to raise money because you're being compared to a software company, yeah. you're supposed to grow as fast. Speed is what mm -hmm. metric is. Yeah. You know, so, and then when you go to a non-profit, social, so there are a few VCs that are coming up in Oakland. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to put better ventures and so on. They're trying to put money there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we make the connections. So if somebody comes there, that's what BWEP has been doing. Like that's mm -hmm. what we have been a very resource oriented thing mm -hmm. where if somebody comes and say, hi, hey, I need a connection in this industry or a venture yes. capitalist or an angel, we make those connections. So that's yeah. what we, 
decide to establish this body as. Uh, going forward, I think we'll be more proactive, as in like if some software, uh, some, if, a, if a postdoc comes in and tells that they want to start a company, we have to give them a small grant so that they can get to incubators. Like QB3 charge is like four five hundred dollars to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. We could take on that charge and, and let them go in for free. Mm -hmm. At least sit in through the workshops and learn, make use of the benefits. One of the advantages of this uh, of BPAP being connected to, to the VSPA, is the visiting scholars and postdocs, mm -hmm. affair, is that they have money that they have to spend on these kind of people, right? And mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, probably uh, money that sounds much more uh, oriented to something that will yes uh, than, than just uh, providing money for for social parts, social mm -hmm. events. Yeah, we never get. <laughs> money in terms of postdocs. I think undergrad programs get a lot more money. When they put a grant to the state of California, a lot of money did go to those programs, like as opposed to any money coming to the postdocs. Hmm. You know, so we did. We wanted to be a part of that group, uh, putting for applications. But what we found was that like five or six groups coming people people coming together, they're all applying, you know, separately. And there's like you know, there's always going to be infighting about sure. if they all think their program is sure. better. Uh, like any other place. Yeah. And how, how do postdocs see their possibilities nowadays? Uh, much brighter, much brighter. You know, just they, when they come here, they're much more engaging. You know, they know that there's a, a, a way out of, you know, taking the technologies. Mm -hmm. you, you see, one interesting thing is that we'll probably, we'll, we'll ask them if they're, if anyone wants to pitch uh, their idea or something. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the big last year yeah. we wouldn't get anyone. Well, last event we sort of almost had to stop them because yeah. there were well, four or five. Well, there is a hands up. I have yeah. this yeah. idea. I want to yeah. talk. There's a friendly culture. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to. Nobody's judging you. Yeah. You know, maybe you'll find find a co-founder, uh, come mm -hmm. talk to us. Uh, that is one thing. And I launched another program called the Berkeley Science Fellows Program uh, because. There are so many incubators now, Citrus Foundry, Skydeck, they all have startup companies. They are mostly two or three co-founders yes. struggling and they don't have the money to hire people. Mm. So what this Science Fellows Program does is we are recruiting postdocs with deep knowledge in all these technologies and we help them call it an internship of kinds <laughs> where they work with the startup companies to help them troubleshoot ideas, and solve problems, help write grants. Yeah. Uh, and so on, uh, and then if they want to learn about the business side, they can do that as well. Uh, it's a flexible time, uh, they don't get paid for it, because a lot of them are international. Visa rules don't allow them to get paid. Uh, but I call it a try before you buy model mm -hmm. uh, for both the parties. Mm -hmm. They might love each other. And, and maybe pay. those startups mm -hmm. can even uh, provide them with a green card afterwards. Right? If they raise yeah. money, they might want to hire people would. eventually, yeah. but this is they already saw people that they work with. It. Mm -hmm. So that's the program we launched and it's going on. So in this past cohort, we had postdocs for nine companies and startups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last one we had for 16 startup companies. So mm -hmm. so most of these then had started from a department or? Some of them departments, uh, some of them independent. Which? Like Citrus Foundry, these are like, what is Skydeck? This? Skydeck was formed by the half school of business. Business of Tarja. No. This is Haas School of Business, the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research, and the School of Engineering. Yeah, School of Those Engineering. Those three schools came together. They came together, put some money in uh, to launch Skydeck. What did they have in mind? I don't know what they had in mind. They wanted to create an incubation space okay. or an accelerator space. You know, when they started Skydeck, they did not have a fund. So hmm. people would just come, they would look for resources and so on. Now, uh, they have a fund manager that raised like $25 million last hmm. semester or year. Mm -hmm. And now they're actually putting money into startup companies that are coming in. Right. So right. even though they had all this space and everything, Berkeley was not getting any equity. Mm. So now the fund is taking care of all those things. Yeah. Uh, Citrus Foundry, again, that's mostly Foundry. Uh, Who started that? Where did that come from? Citrus, uh, it's, it's departmental. Which department? Uh, that's the engineering department mostly. Yeah. Industrial engineering? Industrial engineering and civil engineering. Uh, there's a, there was a nano lab in Citrus Foundry. That was that was the initiator of that. Mm -hmm. And there were again uh, a couple of grad students, I think. So it came from the students or the faculty or the administration of the schools. It's a combination of students and faculty. Okay. They came together to start that, and then 
they're yeah. raising their own fund now. Who who's the key to that? Uh, Peter Miner, Alec Chen. That's Citrus. Citrus Fabry, yeah. And how how is that long is that been around? Uh, I would say about like eight years, eight or ten years. Okay. Yeah. And Skydeck? Skydeck was formed after Citrus Foundry, if I believe it. I would say like six years. Uh, I mean, yeah, about five years. Skydeck. Okay. Five years. And what's launch? Launch, I have no idea. I keep getting emails. <laughs> and I start following it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the house is uh, incubator start, accelerator started by two undergrads. Undergrads. Yeah, they raised a venture fund, and they are incubating startup companies. Who's that? Who, do you know who did that? I f forget the names of those people. So, yeah, I can I can send that. Yeah. You can send yes, an yeah. email with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the house that's incubated, they raised the fund. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and the iCore, Lean Transfer, Clean Tech to Market, these are like Haskell of business. Haas. Yeah. That, that whole thing is Haas. Okay. So Lean Transfer, that sounds like uh, Steve Blank. Steve Blank, yeah. yeah. So that idea came over from Stanford? Yeah. yeah. And he this one ditches, uh, sounds some courses here. It's right? a, it's a, it, was, it was a part of that too, Steve Blank, iCore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It teaches a few courses here. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then Clean Tech to Market. Course. Clean Tech to Market is an interesting program. The Haskell of Business. What they did was, uh, they, they knew that there was a lot of energy research going on on campus. So they created this program where professors, if they want to see if there's a commercial potential for mm. technology, they can submit them to the program. Yeah. They so every semester they take these program, uh, these uh, research this topic, right? Topics, research. and then they would actually offer them market research, the incoming class of business school students would pick one topic, go out and do research mm. and come back and give a report. Yeah. They would say, oh, this, this is ripe for the market, this, this is useless, or, or market is looking for these data points. Mm. So they can build on that and do those things. Mm -hmm. So that's a, yeah, that's the Haas program. Okay. And it's, it's actually companies, right, that come and Companies come and talk to the. No, these are the professors. So these, the professors they, they apply the regular resources of the business school yes. exercises yes. they're doing anyway. Yeah. But they uh, made them to something useful. Yes. But sure that they're not. It's not related to the market already. Is it? No. no. These are these are research like you know, if a, if a professor is working on energy, a battery or something, something in biofuels, uh -huh. uh, they don't know what to do with it. Okay. So okay. Then work. there's a bunch of funding issues. No, oh, these are all funds. Yeah. Okay, these are workshops. Yeah, workshops. Yeah. Who runs these? QB3 uh, and Iper Office. Okay, and uh, how useful do people find these? Uh, they're good. I, I was a part of them. Have you have you been getting uh, SVIR? I did not Friends? get any, but yeah, university is getting them. Yeah. 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 They're, they're metrics on the on on the yeah, web, yeah. website. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, and then you told us about the fun coming afterwards. Yeah. And what's the Berkeley Catalyst? Uh, I don't know much about that Catalyst okay. fund. Yeah. And Blue Bear? Blue Bear Ventures, it's, I, I have not, don't have much idea, but it's an alumni group. Oh, alumni, things. okay. Yeah. Uh, alumni of engineering or? Uh, the whole university. The whole university, yeah. Oh, okay. And then Osage. Osage, I think it was from the office of the president or something, or at tech transfer offices. They brought some money together to encourage startups from universities, yeah. translating universities. That's an old fund, actually, yeah. Uh-huh. And the house fund? The house is, I told, for the undergrads. Oh, undergrads, yes, yeah. yes. And it's Berkeley it's Angel Network. Yeah, that's the angel group. Yeah. From outside? Uh, it uh, mostly is alumni. 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 One of yeah. them is going to be tonight. Yeah, oh, just, okay. Okay. Yeah, to, tonight we have uh, Berkeley Angel. He's not here as a, a, a Berkeley Angel right. Network, but he's right. he, is a bird, a bird mm -hmm. And then down here, well, that's where we are. Begin Berkeley. This is the website. The Begin. Website. Yeah. This is the, the gateway. Yeah. This is the gateway. Uh huh. Yeah, it says the Berkeley Gateway. See it. Yeah. Website. And the Entrepreneurship Association. Yeah, that's a student ha group. It's student group. Pass. Pass. And fraternity. That's undergrad fraternity. Yeah. What do they have to do with entrepreneurship? Uh, 
the frat house has people who want undergrads starting companies, wanting to start companies. Okay. And Cal Founders alumni. It's an alumni group. I think it's more of a support or resource. Yeah. It's a Tarja cluster center. Yeah. That's the engineering school. Okay. And Fung Institute? They're all engineering schools. Like, they all have raised some money from donors, and so they have individual programs going on right. targeted to the students coming to their departments, mostly undergrad. Yeah, yeah. Blum Center, yeah, they all. So it's getting to be pretty dense. It's, it's a dense thing. A lot of, yeah. And besides, although they have put things in this layer, some of, some, some of the boxes that are here also do something there, right? Right, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. So, do you think this will be uh, denser or we've reached optimum and it's just a matter of growing <laughs> these things? Cleaning up and organizing. I think they're more inclined towards growing these yeah. Yeah, than trying to bring anything new, but mm -hmm. they'll never stop a new one from coming if, if somebody is forceful enough. Right. right. If it is right. helpful enough. Yeah. I mean, pretty soon they'll have the bio hub. Mm -hmm. That's going to come up. It's going to be another box. Yeah. yeah. I think they raised like. Some donor is giving a hundred million dollar check. Mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Uh, so that's a substantial. They're renovating one of the on-campus buildings, uh, an mm -hmm. old building that needed renovation. Mm -hmm. then yeah. Oh, that's the, those buildings in the north side. Yeah. 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 So what about the incubation space. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be focused more. And what about uh, translational research? What do you mean by that? Well, Stanford is now building this Chem H. It's basically a professional staff to help uh, do some of the research that the startups uh, mm. would need for support uh, to move the process along. Right, right. So we have the Molecular Foundry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's again, that one is a federal grant funded program where they have phenomenal equipment, uh, top-notch infrastructure there. And they, the way to structure it is, their PIs, the professors, 50% of the research time is spent on their own research. The fifty percent of the rest of the time is supposed to be helping these startup companies that come through, you know, and mm -hmm. they're paid by the government. Yeah. So it's it's free for entrepreneurs, as long as uh, they publish the study. Mm -hmm. So it's to benefit the society. That's that's the aim. Uh, so a bunch of our hard tech startup companies go and work out of there. Yeah, it's, it's nothing like that. Yeah. yeah. They have chemistry and biology, like nano facilities, microscopes. One thing that I wasn't able to explain very well was the SOFI agreement. SOFI agreement. SOFI. So, so. SOFI agreement, you know, we found that some faculty are wanting to help startup companies and they have lab space and equipment that can actually support a startup company. So this is a new pilot program that is going on where a startup coming to Skydeck or Citrus Foundry wants to use a faculty lab space. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll have to sign this agreement. Uh, you know, it's a long process, but then it, it, they have to have checks and balances because it's public university, mm -hmm. uh, and they have to take care of the IP and keep things separately. And there's a small fees associated with it, uh, but you know, I think it's a win-win for everybody. So the basic idea is that you can uh, incubate a startup in a lab. In a lab, yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's more about having the space and equipment. Then the uh, research input of the professor or uh, advice? They usually uh, get on, on, on the board as an advisor for the startup company. Okay, so, so they, they could use provide. their, yes, they could but use the expertise. It's also a matter of uh, allowing the startup to have the intellectual property right and not having it transferred. Right. So they, they try to keep, you know, if there's a joint development going on between mm -hmm. Berkeley and the startup company, they have to reveal that and, you know, they have agreements about they can license the technology if it is coming from intellectual property from a UC Berkeley staff. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's what is causing some issues because startups want to own the IP. Uh, but they try to make it easy for them. Uh, yeah. so, uh, I know a few companies uh, that are actually working on the agreement. Yeah. So where did the impetus for this come from? So, yeah. I think there was all over the place. You know, there was a push from the IP office for commercializing. There yeah. was some faculty wanting to start companies, some postdocs wanted to do things, vice chancellor's office wanted to do things, and so it's a combination of that. So, but then I'm sure there's going to be faculty rebelling about that. So they 
launched as a small pilot program. Mm -hmm. It took a long time to design that because there's so much legalities involved yeah. in more than that. And finally, I think it's, yeah. That, that was one of the outcomes of the Innovation Council as well. It mm -hmm. was deeply discussed there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike Cohen was leading that effort as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mike Cohen? Yeah. Mike Cohen. Is, is, there, is yeah. that guy here then? Oh, okay. Well, definitely. Yeah, oh, talk great guy. Yeah. Great guy you should definitely talk to. Yeah. If yeah, you didn't, yeah. if, I'll be happy to make an introduction. Yeah, we've, we've, already, we've already tried it, it's just that he's not here yeah, today. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to make sure that it, yeah. I tried today because yeah. today was the day yeah. that I knew yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. But we'll try some sure. next sure. week. Or sure, definitely. definitely. Okay, so that's... Uh, that's a Berkeley ecosystem. Yeah, uh, that's some innovation to do it uh, right in the lab. It yeah. used, used to happen informally yeah. 70, 80 years ago. Yeah. But then things <laughs> moved to art. Yes, yes. So, yeah. It's interesting now it's coming back together. It's coming together, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Time is ripe and you know, I think funding challenges to previously, like there was so much federal funding that nobody had to look sideways for any money. Hmm. And now there's like a lot of industry sponsored research going on. Yeah. You know, and the universities are getting rich. They look at Stanford, they're like, you know, they make so much money from companies that are successful yeah. out of there. So those are financial motives too. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's space available in the laboratories because there isn't the same amount of federal money for research as there was. That is part of the reason. That is definitely part of the reason. Yes. Yeah. That's part of the reason and you know, some people, some professors are getting not so productive, like they're getting older, they might not be using the same space. Mm -hmm. So, but then they have all the experience. Yes. They, you know, why let that go? Right. You know, I think that's one school of thought. Mm -hmm. So it's one way of having people who might retire stay on. Yeah. Yeah, and if they want to move on, well, that's as an advisor, something that we have not speculated yet. <laughs> Stanford does a good job. Stanford helps you retire sooner if you want to leave. I think sixty is the age at which they want. They want if the professor wants to leave. I think they want to. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think no, I read no, that. No, but it's also yeah. true in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, they want them to move on so that young blood can come and new ideas can flow. So that's because mm -hmm. there are professors like 80, 90 years old, mm -hmm. like may, might not be productive, but then. They're holding on to the lab space, mm -hmm. which might not be good yeah. for new blood to come in. Yeah. Space is limited. Yeah. Faculty jobs are still limited. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is terrific. It really yeah. is a great. Yeah, I, uh, hope, I hope it was helpful. Overview. Yeah. Yeah. So, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> At a startup. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the, the it's toughest question so far. Startup. <laughs> uh, I think. You know, once you get into startups, it's hard to go work at a big company. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought you were going to say not changing nappies any longer. In like yeah. <laughs> five so, years. So yeah. in, in ten years. I don't know. Uh, I I maybe become an investor somewhere if mm -hmm. we have enough money or some VC firm wants me to. But I, I think I, I'm a builder. That that I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm transitioning from my startup company. You know made some good progress but healthcare industry is so hard hmm. so I'm moving on to my next challenge uh, which is uh, I'll be working with a diagnostic startup it's a UC Berkeley startup started by postdocs uh, I'll be joining them mm -hmm. uh, well I, I started working with them and what's your role uh, I'll be operation CEO <laughs> yeah, be, yeah. I'm taking care of more of the business side and collaborations and stuff mm -hmm. partnerships with pharma and biotech companies mm -hmm. So that's where I'm heading towards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, this is why you had to commute today. That's I, why I, I, I didn't even know about that. Yet. Yeah, so this is yeah. New, new. It's it's new. I just started, uh, you know, this week. Mm -hmm. How about that? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So exactly. they got accelerator to Illumina accelerator in Foster City. So, mm -hmm. and I've been friends with the postdoc for a long time, and I've been guiding right. them. Right. So they asked me to join, and you know. I thought I'll give it a shot at least. At least yeah. give it a shot for three months, see if they like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. So now you're kind of participating here as an alumnus. Yeah, sure. I've always been an alumnus, right? Yeah. 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 And still run the programs, PPAP and like yeah. Science Fellows program. So there's still that activity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But you, you now have, uh, I don't know if that has already uh, worked out, but you will try to. There was this possibility that you would be in charge of uh, also be happy and things and, and I, things nothing more. nothing worked out yet. No. So we'll see what happens yeah. out of that. Yeah. Oops, this. It's. They wanted me to, you know, 
at the end of the day, when you run organizations like BPAP and Pipe, uh, it comes to continuity. Mm. These are postdocs who come and go, and it, they are having to reinvent the whole wheel yes. every time a leadership changes. So the VSP has said, like, maybe I should be there to hold on mm. and then like maintain that institutional memory. Yeah. Uh, help them recruit people also before people, the whole team leaves. Mm. Uh, they can do things. Yeah. Yeah. So and it, it's right because it's a volunteer organization. Yeah. Right? It's a volunteer organization based on people that are here for sure. short periods. Yeah. So like they decided not to put in a person to carry the memory. They never had any, so that's why this yeah. new school of thought is like maybe I should do that. Mm. It's important, otherwise yeah. things will get lost. Yeah. 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 Somebody to hold things together without right. falling apart. Right. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna consider that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And besides, what happens is that whoever comes and, and follows this for one year still <laughs> doesn't. You, you know, if there are boxes there that he doesn't know, fancy what happens with someone that sure the the, the new boards that we will try to mm-hmm. yeah, they have, have for, for the next year every year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's actually a, a very. I mean, it, it's this organization as well. being a volunteer at uh, BPAP is a way of trying to get to know this a little mm-hmm. better. Yeah. Because every month we have someone from one of these boxes right. coming and trying to explain yeah. Yeah. what you know what they mean. And what yeah. So the Politanos coming was important. That was a big change, I think, in uh, structurally for the ecosystem, and that was important. Yeah, there was like there were complaints from the IP officers because they're overworked already. They don't have no staff. So and then suddenly there's a interest to bring in revenues. Uh, that that's. A nationwide thing. I think a lot of universities are going towards that direction. Mm. Uh, I think funding has to do something with that, both the state level and the federal government mm. levels. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And what about on the campus level? Uh, where's the leadership mostly come from? What, where is that? The leadership on the campus level. Leadership, it's coming from pockets, all kinds of pockets. You know, if there are like three or four groups in engineering school doing things, right? Mm-hmm. So, they said, like, okay, that's fine, find your centers. Mm-hmm. If, if, as long as they bring some money in to support the programs and, mm-hmm. and so on, and then yeah, it becomes prestigious. And from the uh, chancellor? Both. Chancellor is supportive, you know, she's coming to the course, she comes here to the events, and yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We never used to see them, but now they're coming to the uh-huh. incubators and accelerators, you see them around here. Yeah. They're uh-huh. this supportive, they're this supportive, yeah. yeah. I think. I think there's like a push and a pull. Previously, I think, apparently I heard from the office of the president, there was a lot of push from top-down approach and it did not go well with a lot of people on campus. Mm-hmm. And now things change, there's a push, there's a pull from there. Uh, so I think it's better. It's, it's, it's a matter of timing. Yeah, yeah. You know? So the uh, the top-down came first? They tried it, it failed, I think. Yeah. yeah that was like 15, 20 years ago. I used to talk to Chris Tucker, uh, Bill Tucker, he used to be at the office of the president. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he's he's a his yeah. He has a lot of knowledge about what was happening there. Now he moved to UC Davis, Bill Tucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, so, there are leadership changes in the office of the president to their high level hires going yeah. on there mm. to run the program. Yeah. So there was a try twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. And that didn't work. That didn't work. And to your knowledge, why was that? You know, if I had to, it was a lot of culture, and it was startup was not in everybody's blood at that point. Yeah. We you didn't hear about all these big companies and startup companies yeah. and money flowing in the valley like mm-hmm. that, uh, and there was plenty of federal government funding too. Yeah. So there are a couple, couple of things. Mm-hmm. And so that changed uh, what at the point that the Palutano came in. I would say I think you know, the valley had. To, Play a big role in that. Hmm. You know, Janet happened afterwards. Okay. There, there were like so, things in motion, right. and there was a catalyst needed, saying like, "Hey, we need to go this direction." Okay. So the role of the valley. The role of the valley. What would you say it is? It, it's just the visibility of startups. I think <clears throat> it's just they're much more visible. You hear so much noise. Right. After the uh, dot com bust. Or after, the, after the dot. I would say after the two thousand eight. You know. Two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say. Any particular ones that? Uh, no, I, I think. Everybody yeah. talks about startups in general right. nowadays. Right. Right. Yeah. You hear about big exits like, oh, yeah. WhatsApp got a credit for $19 billion. That's a big deal. Yeah. Facebook is making money. 
that mm-hmm. company is making money. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, where does Berkeley see itself in relationship to the Valley? They think they're in the midst of it. You know, they want to be number one. Mm-hmm. The number of startups that are funded. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Stanford is taking that position right now. I think they can reach that at some point. I think. Well, mm-hmm. at least by the sheer numbers, right? You know, yes. Thirty thousand undergrads. Yes. <laughs> 10,000 grad students, like 3,000 postdocs. They should it's, it's, it shouldn't be too difficult. Right? It should be too difficult, yeah, if it's if it's a numbers game. You know. yeah. So you expect that to happen at some point? At some point, I think so. Yeah. I, I see it in the next five years, at mm-hmm. least. Yeah. yeah. So Berkeley sees itself as part of the valley now. Yeah. 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 A lot more people are coming to the campus too. So They used to come for graduation ceremonies to give a speech. Now yeah. they're on campus more often. Yeah. <laughs> For because of all these activities that are going on. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So. When did that uh, change start to happen? I would say like last five to six years. Yeah. Uh, you see a lot more high visibility of mm-hmm. leaders coming on campus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just being far off from the valley is, is indeed playing a role, but I think things are moving. I think there's no space in San Francisco. I think valley was, Silicon Valley spread to San Francisco now, which is going over the bridge. Mm-hmm. I think that's what is happening. So. Over the bridge from San Francisco? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it got there first, right? The, the valley expanded to San yeah, Francisco and now to the... Yeah. Yeah. And all the Twitters and Ubers, they all end up there now. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. okay. We should yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, have to all finish right. this because we have to start yeah, sure, preparing the no, other fine. part of the show there. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. It's great to meet. Great to meet.